What a great speech. What a great governor. What a, what a great delegation. What a great state you guys are. We're not far from you in Florida. I want to I wanna start. Uh, I'm going to be, this is a Trump rally, so we peak, speak straight. I want to speak straight to you, okay? All right. When they called me about this yesterday, I want to be honest. When they said, yeah, we're doing this rally in Georgia. Maybe you want to come up. It's not that far, you know. And I said, look, I don't know. I mean, right now, we're up 10-3 in the first half. And, uh... And, uh, yeah, I said, uh, I said, I don't know if they're going to want to see me tomorrow over there, because right now my Florida Gators are eating the dogs. But they played the rest of the game, and Georgia went Georgia on us, and so I'm, I'm sure you're very happy to For the fourth straight year, and uh, and so, uh, but I, you know, I said I gotta go. I have to be there first of all because they're gonna be in a good mood, and second, because of what's truly at stake. Look, I, I thought I was gonna come up here today and tell you about all the horrible things that are being said. I, I have never. I'll be honest. I look. There's always been bias in the media. I don't know if you guys know that. There's always been bias because, and I mean, bias exists because. Every human being is biased, okay? I'm biased, all right? We're all biased. But I don't think we've ever seen what we've seen in the last 10 days. This is nothing but a full-scale effort to do everything you possibly can at virtually every major media outlet in America to depress and suppress Republican votes and Trump voters and to undermine and prevent Donald Trump from being elected. It's a, it's a, it's a, I've never seen anything like it. It's a full-scale, a full-scale assault. Even yesterday, Kamala Harris was apparently on an airplane headed to Michigan. They called her, do you want to be on Saturday Night Live? And they made a U-turn, apparently left a bunch of people stranded, waiting for, I don't know how many people went to a rally anyway. Uh, she probably told them Beyonce was going to be there, so they all showed up. And then, you know, did a U-turn and went to Saturday Night Live, by the way, in violation of the law. But my only hope was, I hope she laughed on Saturday Night Live in front of millions of people just to heard her laughing for a few minutes, because that's probably worth two to three million votes right there. But it's an all full-scale assault. I did a show this morning, and, and it's interesting. They take like a five-second snippet of something Trump says and says, oh, he's calling for violence or he's violent rhetoric. As a violent rhetoric, he's the guy that's been shot, almost shot at, well, shot at one time and almost assassinated the second. He's the violent rhetoric. They're the violent rhetoric. So, but... All this is happening, but I want to focus on something in the limited time I have with you that's a little different, but the same in some ways. And that is what we're hopeful of. Look, I, my parents were born in Cuba. They came here in 1956. There's no way there's four Cubans here. That's not true. That's not true. Four? If there's five, it's called a conspiracy. Four is all right. It's manageable, manageable. By the way, I want to make clear, Mark Cuban is not Cuban, okay? I don't know how he got that name, but he's not Cuban. Not Cuban. All right. So, and I'm an American by birth. They're Americans by choice. And let me tell you something. There isn't a day that goes by. And it sounds like maybe it's not true, but it really is. There isn't a day that goes by where I don't thank God that they came here and that this country existed, that it was the nation that was 90 miles from the shores of the nation of their birth. Because it was the only place in the world where anyone from anywhere could achieve anything by working hard and playing by the rules. And I'm telling you guys, as someone, I don't know, I've never, look, I never lived in another country. But I live surrounded by people that did. And the people who have come from other places and know what life is like outside of Americans, they're the first ones to tell you, do you guys have any idea how special, how unique, how extraordinary the country that you have is? How extraordinary and special the United States is? And it is... Something that I think have been instilled in me my entire life, but it's what propelled me to want to serve in public in office. And it's what I fear is at stake and what we're losing. Not because our people. Our path, the path of decline, the path of destruction. And we have a candidate running. 
core, what his message is. It's the most straightforward message you can ever have. What is the message of Donald Trump's campaign? He wants to make America great again. How, how is that offensive? How is that outrageous? How is it offensive to say that the number one job of the United States government is to serve the American people and put them above anything else? When, when did that become offensive? That's common sense, and we need that again. We need a government led by people with a president that puts you... Since what is it offensive to say, look, we have a country, we have to have laws. If tomorrow you announced anyone who wants to come to America, please do, which is basically what's happened. But you, if you just basically said, from now on, anyone who wants to come, just come anywhere you want, anytime you want. Literally, 150, 200 million people would come. They would come here. But no country in the world would do that, except this one under this administration of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And when you have 11, 12, 13 million people, yes, the majority of them are not criminals, but if... 5% of 12 million people are dangerous criminals. That is a lot of dangerous criminals, and they're in our country, and they're doing damage now, and that needs to stop. How is it offensive to say that that is going to stop? And how is it offensive to say that we want America to be respected in the world again? They don't respect Joe Biden. They'll laugh at Kamala Harris. The world has spiraled out of control with Joe Biden. It'll catch fire under Kamala Harris. We'll have more wars and more conflict and less fear. So it is not radical and it is not outrageous to want a president that is feared and respected by our enemies and trusted by our allies, like Donald Trump. So I am tired of bad news. I am tired of negative headlines about our country. I am tired of hearing the price of this is going up and more crime over here and more war over there and less respect for America. We are tired of the bad news. We want to live in an era of prosperity. We want to live in an era of safety and security. We want to live in an era of peace and we want to live in an era of strength. We want an America that dreams big again. And for that, we need to elect Donald Trump. That's the stake in this election. That's the America I grew up in. That's the America my children, your children, your grandchildren deserve to inherit. And there's only one way to do that. And that is you have to come out and vote. We have to come out and vote. And if we do, Donald Trump will not just be our 45th president, he'll be our 47th. And America will be great again for our children and for the future. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage.